before we start, I want to invite you to, as far as possible, let's kneel down and have a prayer, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for giving us the opportunity uh, to review, to study uh, the things that we, that we were going to be seeing in these last days and as we see things that we maybe never experienced in the past, help us, O oh Lord, to get ready. Get ready for that coming. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And this is what we call end time news and ministry update. And because I got some information over here, I'm going to take five minutes before I take you to over there. Because I believe that things that we need to, that you need to know, I need to know, that it's taking place. Uh, I don't think what God wants his people to be blind, to be, you know, like a, they don't care what's taking place. I know that that's what we've been told uh, for many years. You know, kind of don't worry about anything. Just be happy that you are a Christian. And that's it. But I think you should know that for the last few years, there's been a concern, a very concern. And, so, and my brother was talking to me a little bit in the back, <clears throat> how the papacy, the Catholic Church has been working on with their plan. Um, my brother was sharing with me in the back that he feels that it is part of, 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 of Roman, Rome's plan, the papacy, to bring as many Roman Catholics into this country to convert this country into Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholic. I believe that too. As a matter of fact, I found, and it was a shame, I, I didn't put it in my briefcase, I found a book. Uh, it's in Spanish, written by um, an ex-Catholic uh, uh, Jesuit priest. No, that's not Rivera. Rivera died about 10 or 12 years ago. I know, it was one of them. But this uh, ex-Catholic priest, Jesuit, he wrote a book in the 1848. It came out. Somebody gave me a copy of the book in South America. It's a very old book in Spanish. And this man, back in the 18th, 19th century, he was writing... In, the, in that book, it says, our major work has been, the major work of the Catholic Church has been to, which is not, nothing new what he was saying, but it was so fascinating to read it right from, from somebody who was, for many, many years, right there of being as a Jesuit. Said so the major work that they have been concentrating was to dissolve, to um, dismantle, dismantle Protestantism. And this man, 1848, he was saying that part of the work was to, to try to dissolve everything that got to do with Protestantism. He says, back then they said that they were infiltrating Protestant churches. Back in the 1848, <laughs> infiltrate, part of the work was to infiltrate the Protestant organizations, Protestant churches, because to, again, to make of no effect <clears throat> Protestantism in the world, especially in the United States. Francisco is coming next year to America. And he has chosen the last part of September to come. If you look at the book of your history here in America, in September, that was when the signing of the Constitution took place in Philadelphia. It's coming that time. 
Not only that, you will see that the establishment of the Jesuit order was also in September, 500 years ago. So what, what, kind, of a, what kind of a message is he giving to us? It should be hinting to us. By him coming to America, the most Protestant nation in the world. Well, it used to be, it used to be, I'm sorry. It used to be. Because I remember, even when I, while I was attending the Roman Catholic Seminary, they were talking about North America as, um, as a monster. It was the monster of the North. You know, the Protestant, those heretics. As my brother, the, the, he's a young man, still, he was telling me a few minutes ago, he says, I recall there was hardly, I didn't see no more, how oh, are you were saying, brother? Hardly that many, any Catholic, right? Do you say? And now, and now what do you see? Every very Catholic. Well, brethren, prophecy is being fulfilled. The papacy has been saying for years now, the last 10 or 12 years, that one of the, and this is right, right from the Catholic world news. It's not that I'm inventing or, no, no, this is right from the horse's mouth. Okay? It says, um, he was meeting the Pope with members of the pontifical, listen to this, he had a meeting, he has been having meeting with the members of the pontifical commission. meeting with the members of the Pontifical Commission. And he said, he told them that we need to, and told them that the region needs more effective evangelization to counteract, to counteract the insidious problem of set. What is the problem that they see? Insidious problem of sex. Some of you, some of you might be saying, "Oh man, poor our poor church, man, this church, maybe is gonna get in." You know, look, look what, what he keeps saying: the rapid development of Protestant sects in the region, particularly, he's talking about Latin America has commanded Vatican attention. In January, a special conference of that problem was held in Rome, co-sponsored by the Latin American bishop with the Pontifical Councils for Christian Unity. What was the problem that they were trying to take care of the sects? Protestant sects. Now, <clears throat> and, and it's so sad that the people that most hear these things, they don't want to hear it. <laughs> every Seventh-day Adventist should know every, from Ted Wilson to the lowest lady, should know what the Vatican means when they say sects. Well, I know the people in the general conference. They know what the Vatican is saying. Do we know what the papacy refer as sect? Remember, he was having a meeting with the members of the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity. But guess who is a member of the Christian of the Pontifical Council of Christian Unity? This young man, Brian, can you come here around Brian, please? Come here, come here. This young man, I just met him today. So nobody can think that I planned something to, I just met you today, right? Yes. I'm glad to meet you today, to, to know you. Not because you parents are from my country, but I see, I know that God has called you for a very special purpose, Brian. I, I met Thank him. You. And, and the same way for everybody here. Let's see, let, let's make sure that the papacy, whom the papacy is talking about when he, he refers to those insidious, you, you can read English better than me. How does it say? 
the insidious problem of sex. See, he even pronounced it better than me, right? <laughs> okay. Well, stay there. Don't, don't go. Okay. Brother, and the only reason that I'm doing this is because uh, I know that you're going to go back, some of you, and I think we should, and, the, and the, it's being recorded, and I, I, be, I believe that it should be our concern to awaken the brethren, to wake them up from the leadership to the, to the laity. Yes. And, you know, it's about time um, that we as a people should be, you know, uh, taking note of what's taking place in our, in our time. What, what is the symbol over here? What, what picture do you see in here? Pope Francis. Okay, and then this symbol is, uh, well, w what is the officially source that, of this document that I got in my hand? www.vatican.va. Okay, so it's a Vatican source. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, doesn't yeah. say eternalgospel.com. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Again, the papacy was having a meeting with members of the, this, what they call the <clears throat> council, the, the, the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity, to, to talk, to see how they're going to deal with those insidious sects. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's see with whom he was having meeting. Okay, Brian? Going to read over here. This is pont Pontifical one. Council uh -huh. for Promoting Christian Unity. Okay, so the same thing that the you, you read, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. The same thing. And the same thing, this came from the Catholic uh, website, yeah. and this came right straight from the Vatican, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's read who are, according to the papacy, right, who are the members that are composing the, council, the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity, right? Yes. I'm going to read some. And you're going to read one only, okay? Is that okay? That's fine. Is that, is that a good deal? Yeah. Okay, the Anglican. It's a, it's a, uh, here is the you know, communities that they're having, are participating. You remember, this is the Council for Promoting Christian Unity, right from the Vatican. The Anglican Church, you see it, right? Communion. Mm -hmm. The Lutheran, mm -hmm. you see it? Well, what is that thing, huh? Can you imagine if Martin Luther were... were, were We'll wake up today and see the church that carry his name being part of the member, members of the Pont Pontifical Council and the Vatican. I, I, I'm not going to take time, but I, you're going to see it in one of our magazines. When I went to Europe, to Germany, part of my mission was not only to preach in some churches over there, self-supporting, of course, um, but also to gather documents. So this was my fourth time right in Germany. And I made a commitment with the brother and says, I, 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 I will accept your invitation. I will accept your ticket this time only if you promise to me that you're going, somebody will take me to the Martin Luther Museum. I said, Pastor, you got it. You got it. You, you, we're going we're to get somebody to take you there, and you know, so you can take pictures and everything. Brother, it was so sad. <coughs> when I went to the so-called Martin Luther Museum, <coughs> you enter and you think that you are into a huge Catholic uh, uh, museum. From the, I mean, unbelievable. You, you're going to see a report. I'm going to bring some of those things on the, on the TV program too. Because I believe people need to know. See, the mission for the Catholic Church, yes, my brother of the blue shirt. What was your brother, your name, Rami again, brother? Uh, Phil. Phil, Phil, Phil. I, I won't forget, brother Phil. I know you from several years now. My brother, my brother Phil was right. The mission and the work of the Catholic Church, especially through the Jesuit, is to destroy everything that got to do with Protestantism. Now, God has said that, we've seen it, but our 
leadership see that? Look at this. I don't think so. I don't think so. So Luther, so you will see in there in that so-called museum, everything is talking about Saint Elizabeth, Saint Pio this, Saint Pius this, Saint, and then at the end, at the end of the huge building, they tell you, you will see the room over there where Martin Luther used to write. I translate the Bible. That's it. They're getting away in 2017 at the 500 years that it's going to be for, from the uh, nailing of the, of the 95 Theses, the Lutheran Church is going to make a worldwide st a statement how the, it was a, one of the greatest tragedies in the history was what took place with the Martin Luther. They are changing even the, I, I saw it. It's a, I'm not talking about to you something that I saw in a video, no. I saw it with my own eyes. I told my translators, to pinch me to see if it's true what I'm saying. They're even changing everything in the cathedral, on, 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 on the cathedral where Martin Luther nailed. I couldn't even read the 95 Theses. They, they had a cover, because they're remodeling the whole thing. So, sad, sad, sad. Methodist, War Alliance. We were reading yesterday, last night, about the Methodists. Remember that? Can you imagine what West, uh, What was that, Wesley? John Wesley, John Wesley would have said? <clears throat> Being a member under the papacy, member of the, of the so-called Pontifical Council. A pontifical, you know what a pontifical? A man given the title pontifical? The high priest? No wonder the Bible described that as the Antichrist. It's a mystery to me all, that all of these churches with the background, the historical background that they have, becoming a member. The Baptists. By now, you, you read them all. I know that, Brian. Because yeah. you seem to be a very <laughs> smart young man. Yeah. Huh? The disciple of Christ. The Pentecostal churches. The world evangelical churches. And what other church do they say? Church of Seventh-day Adventists. You can sit down now, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. So, brethren, who... A, a question that I... Only you self-answered it. Whom do they refer then to the sects, those insidious sects? <clears throat> Could not be those members because they are members. They say that they're members, they're part of. And if I keep reading the document, you will see that those, the, the, the latest churches that have been coming, uniting with them, and they mention. Some of them, they have even been closer to us than the older churches from the Reformation. I know, I know a lot of our brethren don't like to hear this. But instead of being, and they get upset. And they, people will be watching this video, they're going to be sending me letters. But let me tell you, instead of sending those letters to me, send it to the leadership. Don't get upset with me. Get upset with them. As I mentioned, as I told a good friend of mine, well, he used to be a good friend of mine. I, I believe he's a good, good friend. He's still pastoring a church in America. He says, but Raphael, how do you know that this is true? I said, well, how do I know? If it's not true, Tell your leadership to make it public in the Adventist Review or in the USA Today that the Vatican is lying. I put the challenge to this friend of mine four years ago. I'm still waiting for that answer. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. Sometimes, I, not, not talking to you, but the most of the brethren I feel it's like a talking to the 
valley of bones, you know, dry bones. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, I don't want to talk about this because it's going to be in the magazine how the Catholic Church has been trying to put down the billboards, talk about them, you know, avoid the mark of the beast. Saturday, True Lost Day, it was published in one, a newspaper. But praise God, they were repeating again the message. I said, praise God for that. So people, more people are getting to know this, about this thing. Praise the Lord. The Lord turns everything for good. Yeah. I have no doubt that part of the plan of Catholic Church is to bring Roman Catholic from South and Central America. But as I told my brother Phil, God always works for everything for good. Most of those, many of those people will not hear the message that I said the Lord for this same time otherwise if they wouldn't come here. So God works for Just look at me. <laughs> I've never even heard the word Adventist or seven days Saturday in my life. But God allowed me to come for a little vacation in North America. That little vacation now is turning into about 37 years already, 38. Praise God for that, right? So the Lord is good. The Lord works everything for good. I know some of you. <sighs> yeah, I have it in my hand. I'm going to say it now because what can I do? Lawsuit is still being, people, brethren, are being threatened to law, with lawsuits in America. Let's not forget that one of the treasurer of the General Conference years ago, he was answering a letter to a retired pastor. Of course, we crossed out the name of the pastor and uh, wrote the letter. Uh, the, the one that requests information, even though we left the name of the uh, leader that answered the letter saying about the question was, what type of funds do you use when you take people to court? The answer was, we used, we appropriated from the tithe funds, tithing. The question is again, and the reason I'm bringing this to you, I have this letter for many years. I don't recall ever bringing this to you. But now the issue about the tie, if they should go to the Giant Conference or not, it's, it's been traveling fast around, especially North America. I heard this even in South America. <laughs> and my answer always has been the same. The Bible, my friends, God says that tithes and offerings is to bring, to have food in the storehouse. And this God, the storehouse is to proclaim the message, to finish up the work. It's, it's not to bring people to court, to sue lawsuit, to pay Catholic attorneys. No, my brethren. I'm not going to say too much about this because we are still trying to negotiate. But a few months ago, the, journey, the leadership tried to stop us into our functioning as a ministry, as a church. You're going to hear more in the near future about it. Because right now, unfortunately, we have to, because they are dealing with attorneys. We were, we had no other choice but to bring those, that case to, an, to, a, to a couple of attorneys too. So it's sad, very sad. I myself wrote a letter appealing to Ted Wilson, myself. In the near future, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it public, the letter, if nothing is resolved. I sent a personal letter to my brother Ted Wilson, appealing to him to stop that nonsense. Stop using those Jesuit infiltrated Jesuit inside our church, trying to destroy, yes, to them, to the papacy, we are insidious sects. My brother pronounced it better. My brother, to God, we must be seen in a different way. 
So I'm, I'm, I want you to pray. Unfortunately, I, 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 I've been told not to give too much information, but uh, I want you to pray because um, right now the devil is trying to stop the work that's been given to us. Um, there are things happening in the last 40 or 50 years that make you wonder. Let me give you an exa another example. How many of you know what took place in 1961 in relationship to the Supreme Court North America and the Sunday laws. I see a hand so that can you tell the congregation what do you know? What well, what took place back that time? Yes. 1961 in relationship to the Supreme Court and other only one person know it. Don't don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Because this I'm doing this not to make trying to ridicule anybody. I just, I just, I'm just bringing you a point to you how there is a big necessity to know what is being taking place right here in the most Protestant nation, the nation that God raised up to be the lighthouse of the world in Protestant, Protestantism. What took place in 1961? Can you tell us in a few seconds in relationship to the Supreme Court and the Sunday law observances in 1961? Sister. I'm sorry? Yeah, what about? Do you remember? Oh, you don't remember. Okay. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. Don't, don't, don't feel bad. But you, you're close. Brethren, in 1961, Many of us were born already. We were grown up, maybe some of us, right? I mean, some of you. There were a couple of cases that were brought up at the Supreme Court that got to do with the observance of the so-called blue laws or the Sunday laws. You know, restricted state laws like in Maryland, Virginia, Massachusetts, I'm sure Ohio must have some kind of um, observance, blue laws. So there were some cases that came, that were brought to the Supreme Court level, trying to dissolve those laws that are um, uh, affecting businesses and, and, and companies. Like in Europe right now, I told you, we're going to see it quickly. Huh? And so they brought this, this they challenge, three or four people challenge the Supreme Court that those laws should be eliminated because they are of religious nature. Do you know what the outcome was? The Supreme Court. And remember, back in 1961, there, was, there were not five or six Roman Catholic judges on the benches, like now. But in 1961, the Supreme Court ruled that those Sunday law observances or blue laws got nothing to do with religion, that they were a secular nature. Now, just one question. As far as you know, from what you have read, are this, can anybody say in the, in the right mind? Anybody with the right mind? Maybe if you go to talk to somebody, ask somebody in the mental institution, but somebody in the right mind can say that the Sunday law, the laws that got to do with Sunday observances are not religious but secular? Can, can you imagine something like that, Sister Gail? Anybody over here can think, can think like the Supreme Court thought in 1961? Unbelievable. But that's exactly what took place in 1961. 
Now, why did I bring this to you? <laughs> huh? Why I'm bringing this to you, my brethren? If, if everybody will stay quiet as of to now, until now, I, I've been asking, where, where were the so-called religious, the Liberty Religious Department? Where were the Seventh-day Adventists in 1961? Oh, that's what I told you earlier. Read our evangelical earthquake. Our evangelical earthquake by Vance Ferrell. You will see what took place in 1961 by 1961. Even though this man doesn't talk at all about this case that I'm referring to you, but he will put you already what was taking place starting in the 50s. You will see that back in those day, time, 1961, we were more concerned to be accepted as a mainstream church. We didn't want to be labeled as those insidious sects. That's what we even have become part of. I have another document from the should be around there, my briefcase someplace, where yeah, it's right here. The World Council of Churches. Okay? Well, they also published in 1996 the members of their of their organization. I don't want to call Brian again. But one thing, brethren, we have to be aware. Prophecy is being fulfilling. And let me tell you, it should be, we have been told by God's prophet that one of the, that God is not going to allow a national Sunday law to be established in this country until the issue will, is going to be very well known and debated. She, God said through the prophet that he's not going to allow the people to be deceived so uh, without having the knowledge. So I want you to pray for this. We are setting up a team. Just pray about it. I know some people have been laughing about it sometimes. I know you're not that type of poor brethren. But we need to, somebody have to try to at least, at least bring the historical and ecclesiastical evidences, evidence that Sunday laws or Sunday observances, yes, they are religious by nature, religious law. Even the Catholic Church said it. That it is an institution established by themselves. So how can they be so blind? And how our people has been so blind not to raise up one voice of protest for over how many years has been already? 1961 to a lot of whole bunch of years, like 45 years, 50 years. That's okay. I'm traveling mercy. So pray, my brethren. I know God's people are going to see the need for such a work like this. And I know also that the enemy's people are going to be very upset. But we need to bring this issue to the public arena. 
So they should know when the National Assembly Law will be established, they should know what, what to decide for. If we, Sister White said, if we don't let them know now, what good is going to be when things will be already coming to pass? So pray about that. Pray about that. We're setting up, trying to set up a team. Talk already to at least one attorney on this. A Jewish guy. And he says, you know, it is a shame, he told me, this attorney. He says, it is a shame that we, the, the, the Jewish people, have not done anything. And look, a Gentile is trying to do this work now. God help us, my brethren. God help us. We are living in a time where good is calling bad and bad is calling good. I know it's not political correct to go against the establishment and over here Protestants has been going after the establishment. Majority of Adventists have been going after the establishment. But brethren, what is the voice crying from the wilderness? What are those voices? The closer we get to the end, the less voices I hear, I see. The devil is trying to bring everybody, bundle everybody, as we read earlier, to, to be burned. Huh? Jesus rebuke the leadership of his days. You read it already. So you know when it's going to rain, when it's not going to rain, but you don't know how to discern the signs of the times. If Jesus would be here today among ourselves, there's no doubt in my mind. He would have said the same thing. You see in the 1961, you see now the papacy has been destroying the Jesuit, the, the Protestantism. You see now the infiltration has been at large, even in our midst. And still, you are conforming with the world instead of following the land, following me. Shaking, refining time, yes. That this time that we got ahead of us, it's going to be a time to refine. You know, to refine. I will make a man more precious than the fine gold. Even a man than the golden wage of our fear. A very pure and rare, and rare pearl. Huh? Yes, the Lord will allow to be, everything is going to be shaken up. We have been told that the straight testimony is going to be brought and shaken inside our midst. Straight testimony. But let's face it, can it be, can the straight testimony message can be given in our churches today? What will happen to you if you do that? Let's, let's be sincere. Let's be honest. Brian, what do you think? Can you go back next Saturday and bring these presentations over there? All the presentations earlier? What, what do you think they'll do to you? Will they allow you to preach again? And that happens in the Dominican Republic, in South America, Central America, in Germany, all over the world. All over the world. I know, brethren, I'm not trying to criticize, I'm just trying to make my case. Make my case. Remember what we studied this morning. What we studied about the John the Baptist in the wilderness. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption is what? Oh, yes, my brethren. Yes. For God's people, for God's true people, this is a special time. Yes. Yes. Hmm? We used to read about this. We used to read about it. That this was going to come. And now we see, we see it. We can see it happening. We're still 
remain in the state of lukewarmness. Hmm? What does God says through the prophet? The Protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the Gulf to grasp the hem of spiritualism. They will reach over the abyss, the abyss, abyss, abyss to collapse hands to what collapse hands with the Roman power. I have to be honest with you. When I came to Adventism even 30 something years ago, and I was reading this, I said, wow, but, and I know it was happening, but in, the, in a smaller scale, a smaller scale. That was hard to swallow. That was hard to read 40 or 50 years ago. And look at that now. Now it's, you heard about this, this guy, Kenneth Copeland. He went to Rome. He traveled from the United States to Rome. And look what took place in them. Okay? What do you think this guy is thinking? <laughs> we got him all. What a good work we have done. Look what we have done. The Protestants are coming to us. Asking for our blessings. I, I mentioned to you what Martin Luther would have said, would have think. But what about Ellen G. White? What do you think she would have said if she would wake up and see what's taking place today? She will die from an instant heart attack and die again. Yes. You broke her heart. Her, her heart. Yes. Uh, they will reach over the abyss to clasp. Hands with Roman. This took place literally when they went to Rome. <laughs> literally. Literally clasping hands. Televangelist and mega church pastor James Robinson. High five with the Pope with cheer, joy, and excitement. High fives usually is what? When they're on the same team, right? Have you seen it? Isn't that what they said? They're the same thing now. Protestants. Mega churches, Protestant. Is prophecy being fulfilled? Yes. 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 All this should be exposing all of our churches. Even, even, even when they sign up to be a member, they should be exposed. We have been told by the God's servants that one thing that we must teach to the people is to break up every joke with human instrumentalities. Every joke. Let, let, let's move along quickly over here. Look at this. This, <laughs> this is another mega church pastor right there in Italy. He went when he heard about Francisco. He, uh, the, this guy coming, the first Jesuit Pope coming. He went, he, could, he couldn't wait. He went into the Vatican to embrace him. Unbelievable. Are the old ones finally healed? No. I'm not saying that. But it's, oh, Satan is preparing the whole platform. Whole platform. This is the company. Maybe you heard about this. This, this, this news came on the, uh, July 9th, a couple of months ago. Hmm? They, a court has convicted Iket French branch for violation of the standard rights. It has been fined 120,000 euros in damages. Do you know how much money is that in dollars? When I went to Germany four months ago, they didn't even, they didn't even want to take, when, when I was uh, trying to buy something in there, they didn't like the dollar. You know why they, they don't like dollar over there? Because it has been devaluated. They don't like the dollar. They said, oh, I'm sorry, we don't take dollar over here. We went to another store, we don't take dollar over here. So it's, 
Because when I went there, it was like a worth 67 cents for one dollar. Error. Huh? By the way, I want you to notice this. I, I'm going to try to go fast, but I want you to keep noticing something. Over here, it says the Protestants, right, are the one. Look at this. I want you to see something. This uh, find of this store, they find them um, all this, about 30 million euro, which would be about $42 million, okay? Because they opened the store. They don't want to comply with the Sunday observance over there. Look what Sister was saying. This fall Sabbath is to be enforced by what? Oppressive law. And we see the Supreme Court of the United States saying, no, 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 no. This is a secular, it's not religion, and everybody stay quiet. Talk about Ventus. I've been praying about it. I want you to pray with me about this. As this seven Adventist attorney told me, he says, I, 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 Pastor, be honest with you. He says, I believe the reason that the leadership haven't taken and nobody has taken is because that might be bringing the biggest uh, 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 issues in this country. Yes. I pray. Even if they were rejected, even the Supreme Court were rejected to hear the case, we can make it known, we can publish all the arguments through the radio, through TV, through newspaper, and let the public know, the, the citizens know, the people know why this apostate Supreme Court still holding on and saying that Sunday observance got nothing to do with religion. Are you kidding us? Are they kidding us? Pope Francis pushing for Sunday law. Look, look at this came in the Associated Press. Openly. Everybody. Openly saying. Pope Francis has lamented the, abandon, the abandoning of the traditional Christian practice of not working on Sunday. He said that spending Sunday with family and friends is an ethical choice for faithful and non-faithful alike. So we have no ethic if we don't take Sunday to observe it. We have no ethic. We are insidious sects. What else? The clergy, we have been told, the clergy will push for Sunday laws. Who will push it? The clergy. Are they doing it? Yes. Yes. Hmm? See, plans of serious import to the people of God are advancing in an underhand manner among the clergymen of various denominations. And the object of this secret maneuvering is to win popular favor for the enforcement of a Sunday sacredness. And they're using the argument of what? The family. Let's keep the family together. The family. And that's how they're going to uh, bring it out. Church leaders. She said that the clergy, look what the church leaders are doing. <laughs> church leaders love it to keep what? Sunday, special day. This came in the Jersey Evening Post, June 29. Huh? The leaders of eight churches have now launched a late attempt to try to persuade the state to reject the move, describing it as a grave mistake. Because some states are saying, let's get away with these blue laws, with these Sunday observances. Clergy is pushing, said, don't do it. That will be a grave, grave mistake. News media is pushing for Sunday. Even the media. Look at August 12, 2014. Huh? In, in uh, the East Valley Tribune in Arizona. Maybe it's time to start. Maybe it's time to start with Sunday as a day of what? 
to turn off your individual phones, Facebook, everything. This newspaper is saying, let's turn everything off. Let's just go to church on Sunday. Is prophecy being fulfilled? Yes. Yes. Clergy is pushing it. The media is pushing it. Everybody is pushing it. Very soon, people like you and me, raising up their voices in protest, are going to be seen as a hateful and, and the most despicable things in society. Get ready. The Pope's, I'm going to go quickly here. He gave us, he has been giving 10 tips hmm, for happiness. This was, came through CNN News. I don't know if you heard it about it. It had to come from Florida to, for you to see it. Look at this. Pope Francis has in this unlikely venue given us his own Sermon on the Mount, his Ten Commandments for happiness and inner peace. That's how the CNN starts saying. Okay? I'm not going to read them all because we don't have time. But let me give you number... Uh, that's number four. One, two, three, four. Live and live. Give yourself to others. Move quietly. Enjoy leisure. Look at number five. The five commandments, or as the CNN called tips for happiness. Sunday is for families. This is actually one of the Ten Commandments, he said. Honor the Sabbath. See how they make Sunday with Sabbath, the true Sabbath. What an abomination. Why the Seventh Adventists are not protesting on this? Huh? This is, this is one of the Ten Commandments. Honor the Sabbath. And even quoted Exodus 28. <laughs> but obviously, he yeah, is applying this to Sunday. Look at number nine. Don't preach your religion too forcefully. <laughs> uh, proselytism brings on paralysis, the Pope tells us. Is, is that the reason why we're so afraid to preach openly in radio and television? The three angels messages? Because we want to follow the tip the, from the Pope? Don't be so open. In your religion. I didn't understand. 1990. I was told by more than one of the leaders. He says, Raphael, if you want to preach the three angels messages, just preach it to your people in the four wall. Preach it to those little Indians that come to your church. Back in those days, we had a couple of hundred South American, Mexico, because we started as Spanish church in Palm Beach County. It was later on, when it, we, we turn into a bilingual group. And don't think that we still got two or three hundred. We, the most we get is about 30 people. Everybody's been gone out. They are afraid. <sighs> yes. No salvation out of the Roman Catholic system. Catholic Church, see, he says. The Pope on June 25th. No one can be called a Christian unless if they are part of the church, he says. No one. So where have we learned when we hear one of the, sometimes we hear in our churches, oh, you cannot be a seventh Adventist if you're part of the church. Where do they learn that from? Where do they learn that from? Brethren, that's Roman Catholicism. That's Roman Catholic theology. To say or to think that you must have your name written in a book of the church in order for you to be a Christian. That's not Adventist. That's not Protestant. That's Roman Catholicism. Okay? Yes. They belong to the church, you say. Huh? Instead of belong, the Christian belong to, to Christ, not to a church. Christ. 
Sida, goes to the car and says, car curses. Pope Francis, you cannot love God without loving your brothers. You cannot love. See, they mix truth and error. Yes, that's true. We must love everybody. But that doesn't mean that you have to go along with people who are not following the truth. We are called to love even our enemies. Yes, you know this statement. You know it. God has a church. Yes. That church is those faithful souls. Up in Luke 3, 13. Where two or three gather in his name. Where Jesus is in the midst. That is what constitutes the church. We were reading last night when some of the reformers were meeting up on the mountain or in the, in the dark, hiding from the persecution of the papacy and other Protestant churches in England, hiding. And Sister White called that God's temple. That was God's temple. Whatever those, you remember what we were reading last night? When those reformers were meeting in the dark, in the quietness, that was God's temple. So it's, it's not a big cathedral. It's not the national establishment. No. So when I hear people say, oh, but we want to be united with God's church. And I said, yes, I want to be united with God's church too. I think all of us should be one, one. What is God's church and what is not God's church? I think we have to have that very clear. People, brethren, are being confused. Oh, we want to be in good turn with God's church. How about you and me? We're now God's church. God help us. A few years ago, we asked just for a little booth, a little corner, try to sign up some brethren to receive the gospel letter. So, you know, trying to wake up as many of our brethren through the so called independent society or whatever. Uh, ASI, I think they call it. ASI, Adventists, Masons, whatever. Oh, sad. We were turned down because according to them we were not part of the part of the church. It's sad. It's sad. God help us, brethren. God help us. We're living in a very, very special time. I wonder, and I, I'm being very sincere with you, I wonder how many even of us, and those of you who will be watching this presentation, will end up in the sight of Jesus. Because to end up in the sight of Jesus, it might carry a cross. It might carry a Practically a rejection, being, being left, felt alone, as Jesus was left alone. So we have to pray daily for wisdom, for a spiritual discernment. We have to pray daily that the Lord will give us the patience of the saints to help us to walk as Christ walked, to follow his path. Despite of his co the consequences. God help us, my brethren. Virgin Mother, Virgin Mary, June 20. Say what I mean? Openly, they're trying to say Christians without Mary in their life are orphans. Are you an orphan? The devil is going to make people be believe soon. Like 
presenting the so-called Mary, that yes, yes, that we, people like you and me, are not Christians. We are orphans. We, are, we don't have a mother. From July, more, more than 80,000 Catholics united in the town of Medjugorje, Medjugorje, in Bosnia, huh? to pray, because they think that Virgin Mary come the tw every day to talk to them. Every day, multitude come. They're waiting to hear the day when Virgin Mary supposedly is going to tell them that the she is going to introduce her son to this world. Yes. That's why we need to bring this message out. We just signed a contract about a year ago with a company in Canada where we placed seven of those billboards in major highways in Canada. Even the president of the company of the billboard says, well, I have to be honest, we never seen, seen such a thing in our, in our company, in our billboard company over here. So praise God that we are the first one there. We have to pray for those people in Canada. We have to pray for those people in Ohio over here, in, in San Francisco, in uh, Tennessee, where else? We got billboards. <laughs> You know, several ones in the, around the country, Florida. And brethren, even though we might think that we are preaching these messages to a valley of dry bones, but the Holy Spirit will put life when the time will come. Let's keep praying for those souls. Well, part two, let me go quickly. This, you know it. All this, all this uh, signing and the... Uh, President Obama just signed an executive order on the lesbian and homosexual. Practically, if because we are being uh, uh, soliciting funds from the Caesar, from the government, now we are going to be forced even to allow lesbians and homosexuals, open lesbians, open homosexuals, um, even to work in our institutions. Yes, because he has said that those institutions that will not follow, uh, allow, you know, those discriminate, discriminate by sexual orientation or religion or race, they are not going to get the support. Now we are going to be forced. Rather than how Satan is, is being so 62%, look at the 62% come from the United States government. $81 million in 2012 alone. Our church got it from Caesar. And because we are getting all those money from Caesar, Caesar is saying now, okay, we're giving you money, but you have to do what we say. Do you understand why Jesus never, never, ever, or any of his disciples appealed to the Caesar for help? No. I ask, what's going, what's, what is a $2 billion a year going for them. Why do we have to go to the Caesar and compromise ourselves? I'm not going to say too much about it. Because I, we hear nowadays even, you know, good people saying, let's send the tie to the conference so they can have more funds to sue brethren like Pope, Brother Perez in Florida. What does this mean for ADRA? They will either lose the hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding, they will not be able to discriminate against gay style because the Caesar is saying you must allow the gays and the lesbians and everybody. Well, they don't call it gays and lesbians. They call it, they call it, uh, they call it, uh, uh, alter yeah, alternate lifestyle. Can help us, can help us. Government contractor. Uh, the same thing. They cannot discriminate. That's why, that's why even myself, I have to be honest, I didn't understand why. I was scratching my head. I said, but why do we have to have a, a, a priest into as a, as a chaplain? Why? 
Now you know why. You have to love everybody. You have to be used in our institutions. Because we are receiving from the Caesar. What a mess. What a mess we have. Hmm? Government contractor. And the universities now. Huh? Well, I'm not going to say. Yeah, everything is a mess. Well, this is a, I was in the Dominican Republic preaching. Oh, my brother Brian, that was there, me preaching and having baptism. We were preaching in the Dominican Republic. I didn't got time to take a picture because I was afraid. But there was a lady that came with a big stick and pulled her daughter, 21 years old daughter, out of the meeting. And she said, I told you not to come to hear this heretic. Took her home. The poor girl was whipped, I don't know how many times. When I heard that, that she was bleeding on her back, on her legs, when I told the people in that little town in, in, in San Domenico, I said, why don't we call the police? They almost laughed at me. They said, no. The police will be, if you were to be a priest, then we will be able to call the police. But because you're not a, pri a priest, a Catholic priest, the police will be upset with us if we call and denounce that lady for, for punishing that poor girl just to come to a meeting like this. My heart was broken. Broken. There was another girl that was pulled out by the hair before she was baptized. Pulled out. Literally dragged out of the meetings. Brethren, the devil is very nervous. He knows that his days are counting. He knows. He knows. The question that we have to ask, do we know also that our days are counted in this earth? Praise God for that, my brother. Praise God for that. This is on the mission from Peru. 12 years already, program is being played in Peru. Yeah. Wow. Right there, a short distance, where we were having a meeting in Peru. I don't know if you know this, but in Peru, there was the central part in South America where they were bringing the so-called heretics to be punished. The Inquisition was set up, the center of the Inquisition was set up right there in Peru. We were able to take some pictures. Let me show it to you quickly over here. There is a museum right there. They call it the Franciscans. <laughs> the Franciscans and the Jesuits laid out on the torture and murder of all the people suspected of heresy and blasphemy throughout all the Americas from their base in Lima, Peru, right there. Oh, he was bringing shields in my body. I'll tell you why, I'll show you why. Uh, Franciscans and the Jesuits laid out in the, the torture and murder of all the people suspected of heresy. Can you imagine if we were to be there alive at that time and preaching these messages? Hmm? Throughout all America from their base in Lima, Peru. That's where they had the inquisitors. The papacy, through the Jesuit order, they established this machinery for the Americas right there in Lima, Peru. Do you think that the waterboarding, uh, how do you call it? The water, waterboarding is, was something invented over here? No. They used to. This, this is an actual picture of the museum where they openly show to the people what did they do when the people were found not, uh, not in, align with, in the alliance with the Catholic faith in Peru. 
Look at this. Torturing. Hmm? All types of abuse and torture were used against, against the enemies of Rome. And the en an enemy for them was just to have a piece of Bible at that time. Look what they have. This is another picture right there. Where they dismembrate the person. They put it on the table and they stop pulling, pulling, pulling until they break up all their bones. Alive. No anesthesia. You can see it. This is right there in the back at the museum. They proudly and without shame, they offer the tours. You can do it. You can go. They, they, they will take you through. Of course, they will say something like this. That was, a pro, that was for that, that time. That, 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 that's, that was the history that we used to believe, that we used to live. Has Rome changed? That's good to know. Keep that in mind. God says that they never change. So the same Pope that we hear today about talking love and mercy is the same spirit was guiding, was guiding these people. The same spirit. So don't let people deceive you, pastors, charismatic pastors, saying, but Catholic Church has changed. There have been many positive reforms taking place. No, my brethren, no, no, no. This is actual pictures. How did they, they used to punish? Hmm? Have you seen this? Also lately in the news, those of you who watch news? The, most, the, the radical Muslims are doing this too, covering their head and taking and beheading the people. Where do they learn that from? Or from whom did they learn that? Hmm? Many of the tr true and faithful Bible-believing saints of God fell victims in the name of God. Hmm? New Inquis Inquisition is coming. It is just a coincidence that the first South American Jesuit Pope chose the name of St. Francis. St. Francis after the Franciscan Inquisition of South America? His name is not Francisco. He took the name out of a Jesuit order. Let the restraints now imposed by secular governments be removed and wrong be what? Reinstated in her former power and there would speedily be a revival of her tyranny and persecution. That's what God says. But we think that we know more than God. That's why we go and join with them. Become a member with them. Because we think that we know more than God. Now it's okay to become a member with the Pontifical Council for Unity because they have changed. It, it, it's all good now. God says, no, they haven't they, they're not going to change. Now, let, I, I, I'm going to finish now. Just answer to me. If you, if you think I'm wrong, I, I want to hear it. Don't you think that every seven Adventist should know about all this? What's taking place? Don't you? I mean, I think that every, every seven Adventist should know. We are being playing games with God. Playing games with the people. That we have been allowed the enemy to blind us. Blind us. Evil to be restrained. God is in control of his work. Yes, praise God for that. He will make sure it is completed. He will restrain the opposition. We are to praise God for this. Yes, my friend. Can you imagine? I know, and unfortunately I cannot say again too much, but that the devil is trying to do all he can to shut us off. Through newspaper, through radio, through the Associated Press. But praise to his name. He's still in control. Still holding the four winds. 
And Satan is not going to win. It's going to be a losing because he is a loser. The opposition the enemies of truth will be one. Restrain that the third angel message may do its work. Praise God this name. Praise the God this name. Oops. Our faithfulness rewarded. Huh? So let the message volume 2, page 55. It's a fearful test and trials await to the people of God. Yes. Who are, don't answer to me, but who are those people of God? Think about it. Who are God's people? Who are people of God? It's a fearful test. The Vatican is saying that they have to fight those insidious sects. By now, I hope you know, and everybody who's watching this, know who are those insidious sects. Trials await the people of God. The spirit of the war is stealing the nations from one end to the earth to the other. But in the midst of the time of trouble that is coming, a time of trouble such as had never been since there was a nation, God's chosen people. I love the way she described it. God's chosen people will stand and move. How they're going to stand, Brother Chris? And move. They're not going to be persuaded, you know, from one side to another. They're going to remain and move. Satan and his angels cannot destroy them. For angels that excel in strength will protect them. Praise the Lord for that. When I am asked, are you afraid to be traveling South America, Central America, and doing all this type of work, knowing that the Catholic Church is trying to destroy you, not only in America, but in those countries? The answer is always the same. If God, if God is with me, who can be against me? If God is with you, who can be against you, my brother? Let's finish with that note. Let's pray. It's 5 o'clock. It's time to go. I want to uh, thank... And my brother Gary and the elders of this church and the leadership, the board, and thanks you all for supporting me today over here <laughs> in these meetings. And I want you to keep praying for us. Uh, keep receiving the, the gospel hero. And uh, let's keep in contact because very soon we won't be able to do this type of work. Let's pray for one another. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here with the brethren up in Ohio. Be with them. We be with them in a special way. If anything has been misunderstood, O oh Lord, through your Holy Spirit, help us to understand it and help us to restore and to build up thy kingdom on this earth. Give us the wisdom and the faithfulness that it's going to be needed to remain with you up to the end. Forgive to us and if anything we have been offending you and help us to become as Christ is. His life will be our life. Give us that privilege, O oh Lord. In the name, oh, it is on his name and for his glory that we ask you all this. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>